is good you it's your boy Sam back here with another video and in this video today guys we're gonna be going over and ranking our top 100 cards in NBA 2k24 my team yes 100 cards now I'm not gonna include gambling cards in this video so if that's something you guys want to see I apologize and I'm sorry I'm not gonna include any gambling cards and it's kind of <laughs> It's good and bad. Like, it's good that I don't include gambling cards, but it's gotten to the point with them, including them in the pack market sometimes. Some of them are mode rewards. It's just gotten so hard to keep track of, you know, who's behind gambling and who's not behind gambling. So if there is any cards that I do miss out on, like as a mode reward that should be in here, I do want to apologize. But again, blame 2K, honestly, that they have made it this hard to come up with a top 100 list. I'm gonna try my best though, starting off at number 100 with Pink Diamond Kyle Korver. Now look, this guy is good for one thing and one thing only, and that's offline modes. So that's why he's at number 100, because in online modes, I actually really don't like Kyle Korver at all. I think the card's horrible. But in offline modes, he can carry you. I'm so close to getting Gilbert Arenas. Why? Because of this man right here in Kyle Korver. And I've heard good things about the Ruby Kyle Korver as well. You know, so if you need a guy, you know, and have him in your collection to help get you through a triple threat offline games, clutch time offline games, mighty mobile offline games, Kyle Korver is your answer. The man with the plan, every shooting badge in the game, a great release. So, so, so good again specifically to offline modes. Coming in at my number 99, we're looking in Diamond Markel Fultz, 93 ball, 95 speed, really solid defensively. Now for me and Markel Fultz, I feel like his release on normal timing with the Markel Fultz upper isn't great. And I'm not saying it's bad, but it's just not a release I've had a ton of success with. D-Book dribble style is fine. Pro leaner obviously is okay. But that's just the one thing about Markel Fultz is I feel like his release should be better. When I've used Markel Fultz, I've had some success then, but just feel like the card should be as slightly better. At my number 98, we're plugging in Harold Miner. Yes, he is undersized, only 6'5 at that shooting guard position. Is that a problem? A little bit. But the card still does give you a lot of things on the court. Again, undersized, but outside of that, really solid. 96 speed, really solid defense, 89 three ball. Just does a lot of things at a really high level. Just is a card that can compete at any level in my team. At my number 97, we're plugging in Amethyst Leonard Miller, 85 three ball, 88 speed, solid enough defense. Now, is this some type? Ty Debo bias, sure. Leonard Miller really might not be a top 100 card in the game, but I really do love this card. 6'10", Ruby Base, just does a lot of things at a high level, and a card that can compete for you if you are just starting your squad for that 8,000 MT. Coming in at my number 96, Pink Diamond Michael Cooper. 3 and D guy in my team, you gotta mention Michael Cooper. Brunson base, Burke Supper does slow it down a little bit, but such great defense for Michael Cooper. Not gonna be a card that can dribble the ball basically at all, but in the catch and shoot situation is fantastic. As far as defensively, fantastic. Just a card that, again, if you don't wanna dribble with at all, you can have a lot of success with Michael Cooper. Cracking my top 95. We're plugging in Pink Diamond, Danny Green, 97 three ball, 88 speed, 85 interior, 96 perimeter, three and D. Think about like Michael Cooper, that's basically what Danny Green is. Now, why do I like Danny Green maybe slightly more? I just think offensively can move a little bit better, dribble a little bit better. That's why he is that slightly higher, but both cards are deserving of being in that top 95. Danny Green coming in at my number 95. Moving to my 94, I wish I could go away from the 3 and D meta, but we're not. My 3 and D meta is staying the exact same. Diamond Bruce Bowen. Rank Bruce Bowen, Danny Green, Michael Cooper, wherever you want. It, it, it would be a common thing if I did start bench cut for somebody to say start bench cut, Bruce Bowen, Danny Green, Michael Cooper. I don't know what to tell you guys. They're all basically like the same identical card in my team. Do people have preferences? Sure. And that's okay. Have your preferences. Run the card you want to run. But I'm telling you, all these cards are going to compete at the highest level. Bruce Bowen has a little more height maybe to him than uh, Danny Green. I think Danny Green's only 6'6". Six, six. But Danny Green offensively should be a little bit better. Really all is preference-based to me in my opinion. 
at my number 93, Pink Diamond Draymond Green, 91 at 3 ball, 93 speed, a fantastic defense with Hall of Fame Limitless, Hall of Fame Immovable Enforcer. Only problem with Draymond Green is the Draymond Green base on slow. I can't get past that. I can't get over that. The Draymond Green in the base on slow is just so troll to me and my team. Still can go out there and get you some stops. Still can play decent defense. I just can't get over it. The Draymond Green base on slow to me is just so troll. Cracking our top 92, Galaxy Opal Sydney Moncrief. Now, Sydney Moncrief is, I mean, is he similar to Draymond Green? With the fact that the best thing they give you on the court is defense, sure. But Sydney Moncrief is a little uh, undersized. Does have Malachi Flynn base on quick pro two leaner, Kyrie dribble style. Offensively, so much better than Draymond Green. On the flip side of things, Draymond Green is a lot taller, so Draymond Green is probably going to play better defense. It really is a preference thing. I think Sidney Moncrief for a token reward wasn't the worst we've seen. Was he, you know, the best, be all, end all? No, but he is a solid card that can go out there and compete on both ends of the court. At my number 91, I know he was in the Ascension somewhere. We're plugging in Galaxy Opal J.R. Smith. Now, maybe I'm biased against J.R. Smith because he's still mostly behind gambling, but the J.R. Smith base with the J.R. Smith upper is just not a release that I want to hype up too much. Like, it's fine. It's definitely a fine release that you can use and have success with. It's just not one of my favorite releases in the game. Or even when I'm playing against J.R. Smith, it's not like I'm super worried about J.R. Smith. Like, the card is fine. People can have some success with him. And if you got J.R. Smith, definitely a card that you can run if you got him for free. But it's just, like, defensively very mid. Offensively, he's fine. I just don't want to hype him up as being great. J.R. Smith is good, not great in my team. Coming in at my number 90, we're plugging in Pink Diamond Andre Kirilenko, AK-47. A guy that can go out there on the court and just compete. You know, he's going to play good defense. Offensively, I don't want to call him a liability, but he's just not great. Release on normal time and fade is the normal leaner. But defensively, AK is one of the better cards I've used all year long. And I've used a lot of great defensive players. AK is right up there with being one of the best of them. Obviously, his offense does limit the card a little bit. It's why he's only in here at number 90. But AK-47 can compete at a really high level. Cracking our top 90 at our number 89. We're plugging in Pink Diamond Bam out of bio. 6'9", 7'2", wingspan. And that's really the problem with Bam is he's just a little undersized at the 4. And you might be like, Ty, 6'9", at the 4 is not bad. It's not, but when you're up against Victor Wembanyama at the 4, it does hurt him a little bit great defense honestly his release is so good even on normal timing bam is a card when he came out i hyped up a lot it's just tough that he is undersized otherwise i'd probably be using bam even on my main account like i really do like this card especially his defensive stats defensive badges it's just a little it just stinks that he's a little bit undersized coming in at my number 88 alexi pokachevsky 93 ball 88 speed really solid defense to me Poku is a card with a quick release uh, that, that's just seven feet tall. You know what? His defense, his player build, it is skinny, but he can play solid enough defense. And he has a release on quick that, you know what? You can go get the job done with. Poku for 42,000 MT really is not bad, especially if you're not needing a guy to make a ton of plays offensively. Remember, he's seven feet tall. His movement's not going to be that great, but defensively does play lanes offensively, has a solid release. Pokachevsky coming in here at my number 88. At my number 87, Pink Diamond Yusuf Nurkic, 87, 3 ball, 86 speed, solid defense, good standing dunk, driving dunk, decent speed of ball, ball and a rebounding off the charts, good 99 offensive, 99 defensive rebounding. The problem for me with Nurkic is the same thing I had in play now. I just don't like his release. And some people might be like, Ty, his release really isn't that bad. You need to just get over all these things. And okay, if that's where you want to be with Nurkic, that's fine. Go and use Nurkic. For me, that's a problem. Hopefully Nurkic doesn't first round my Timberwolves in real life, man. Nurkic, I, I can hate on you in the game, but in real life, please do not first round my Timberwolves. At my number 86, I'm plugging in Galaxy Opal Danny Granger. 94, three ball, 92 speed, 93 lateral queen, is solid speed ball, boy. No. Problem with Danny Granger, I mean, the Haywood Highsmith base is just okay. Like, it's just okay. D-book dribble style, normal leader. Thing for me is, like, offensively, he's going to be way better than a guy like Andre Kirilenko. But on the defensive end of the court, how sad is it that I still prefer Pink Diamond AK to a Galaxy Opal Danny Grange? It's the way it is. And you guys know I like defense more than offense. At my number 84, Pink Diamond Jabari Smith Jr., 92, 3-ball, 88 speed. 
decent defense. But the thing about Jabari Smith Jr. is this. He's got a good release. That's why people like Jabari Smith Jr. If he didn't have a good release, people wouldn't hype him up nearly as much. I knew when the moment I used the Ruby Jabari Smith Jr. that his release was something special. Same thing for the Pink Diamond. 6'11 can go out there and compete on that defense end of the court. Is free in domination. If you get him, definitely maybe should be running him at number 84. At my number 83, Pink Diamond Walker Kessler. Now, I know a lot of people are like, Ty, we don't have any really decent auctionable centers. And you know what? Outside of Sabonis, who is expensive, they're kind of right. Now, Walker Kessler is solid, but even him. Release isn't great. 82 three ball, 85 speed. He comes with a 33 steal. Like, he's not perfect, but he's one of the better, you know, buyable player market cards that we have in the game as far as big men are concerned so again I, I i still think the lack of big men is a problem in my team and something that needs to be addressed for now though walker kester can get the job done for thirty-two thousand mt at my number not eight and i really do like eight but coming in at my 82 pink diamond d wade another domination card that if you get you can go out there and compete at that small forward position. And that's all you need. Dean Wade's free, has his base on quick, normal, leaner. Can't really dribble though. You see it out of a lot of the small forwards that I've talked about. Even like AK-47 can't really dribble much. He can dribble more than Dean Wade. I do think Dean Wade is a more complete card. And just with his release, gives you a little bit more offensively than a guy like AK-47. Dean Wade, maybe too high on him than I should be. But I do not care at number 82. At my number 81, Galaxy help with Chris Middleton. Now, when I first used Middleton, I'm like, you know what? This card is so good. He's absolutely elite, absolutely incredible. And as times went on, I'm like, you know what? The card's fine, but I just don't know about him. Like, there's just parts of his game that I'm just not necessarily in love with. Starts and ends with that release. Just kind of tough to get open, get a shot off with. Still solid enough to come in here at number 81, but anything higher than that is a little bit crazy, in my opinion. At my number 80, Pink Diamond, Thorough Bailey. Why do I like Thorough Bailey so much? He's long, he's lengthy, like 6'11", can get you stops, good player, amount of player boot, can play the three, can play the four, great versatility, release-wise is okay. I could go on and on about Pink Diamond Throw Bailey. The card is so, so, so good in my team. Definitely a card that, you know what, if, if you got... I, you know, in season what? Season four can still play. Like, Thorough Bailey for his time was so, so good. It's still that good to this day. Coming in at my number 79, Galaxy Opa Buddy Heal. First salary cap reward of the season. Obviously, the ultimate one to Kembe Matumbo is good. Buddy is fine. He's just not great. Buddy Heal based on very quick is good. Trade dribble style, I think, is personally pretty troll. I, I, I'm going to go get Buddy, obviously, because I do want the ultimate Dikembe Mutombo. But am I excited about Buddy Heal? Do I think this card is going to like play over my point guards right now? No. And that's okay. Again, cards don't always have to be the best cards in the game, but Buddy Heal certainly isn't, man. This card, not great in my team. At my number 78, a card I kind of want to try out, but I don't want to spend my tokens on, is Galaxy Opal Elgin Bailey. Like, this card looks actually really good. MPJ base on very quick, pro three leaner, Kobe dribble style, can play the two at 6'5". This card looks really good. And honestly, I might spend my tokens on Elgin Baylor. The problem is I don't think he plays over a guy like Andrew Wiggins or Allen Houston. Now, you guys can let me know down below in the comments if I'm too low on Elgin Baylor, but that's just the reason I haven't spent my tokens on him quite yet. It's because I don't think he is going to be that elite level. At my number 70, or 77, Denny of Dia, 93 ball, 86 speed, a solid enough defense. Denny's not going to do anything that's going to blow you away, but at the end of the day, he's a 6'9 point guard. To me, think of Denny as just being a long, lengthy guy that can compete at, you know, with, with point guards, compete with power forwards, and knock down open shots. That's what he gives you. Again, another domination reward. If you grinded that LeBron domination, you got a lot of great cards. Denny is one of them that I do think can play and compete at a pretty high level. At my number 76, Jaron Jackson Jr. Came out in the rush set, the one for Austin Reeves. And Jaron, man, 91 three ball, great defensively, really solid. Now, the problem with Jaron is I don't necessarily love his release. A lot of people are in the same boat as me where they're like, you know what, his release is fine. Just not necessarily the biggest fan of it. Only on normal timing, kind of a low release point. Definitely it gives you some hesitation. But my main thing with Jaron, the reason I like him the most is because I like his player model player build. He is 6'10", but he, it feels like he's larger than that. Like, I don't even know if that makes sense, but that's just the truth. Jaron does feel larger than 6'10", wide player model player build. 
can go out there and still give you a lot. Galaxy Opal Zion coming in at my number 75. Three ball only an 89 release. Obviously on normal time, he's not great, but he's got his release on very quick with this card. Very quick, Trey Leaner, Diva Dribble Style. Does give you a little bit more at 6'6". Still undersized at that small forward or power forward position. That's kind of the biggest red flag for Zion, but release on very quick does have the ability to at least go out there and compete don't think the card's perfect obviously in here at number 75 i'm not super high on him but definitely a card if you have can still go out there and give you something at my number 74 Ye yaylin seven feet to seven four wingspan odd spots from both corners it's crazy to me Ye yaylin came out two months ago like the last two months of my team i feel like have just been like, I don't know, like no content for me. So, I mean, I still do like Yi. High three ball, decent speed, decent enough defense, but uh, good defensive badges there. Yi Yalen, seven feet tall, does give you a lot on the court. At my number 73, I know Carlo loves this guy. I haven't really, uh, you know, done a lot with him, but I, I do respect him enough to at least put him on this list. 79 three ball, 84 speed, decent interior perimeter. Vooch base is fine. I just think he can go out there and compete against some of the other best bigs. And and I think that's got to mean something in a game in which we don't have a lot of great budget bigs. I do think Bryant Reeves is better than a guy like Vucevic by himself just because he's going to give you a little more on that defensive side of the ball. Coming in at my number 72, we're plugging in Pink Diamond Anthony Davis. Now, I know people are like, Ty, but there's a dark matter, Anthony Davis. Why are we talking about a Pink Diamond Anthony Davis? Because he's not hidden behind packs. He's not hidden behind gambling. So I'm going to include him in a tier list. And obviously, if you have the dark matter, I'm going to, I'd be a fan of it. Like, there's no questions. Like, same thing with uh, when I talk about Giannis. When I talk about Giannis, obviously, we're talking about the Pink Diamond Giannis. If you have Galaxy Opal Giannis, use him. If you have 100 overall Giannis, obviously, use him doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out if you have dark matters 100 overalls i would play them okay like and if you have if you're the oh todd do i play 100 overall dirk or 100 overall kg oh poor you i feel bad for you like come on man i'm trying to help out guys that actually need help building their squads and so that's why i'm I, i'm talking about this pink diamond anthony davis right now look at number 72 think it's a perfect spot just think he's a slightly better anthony davis high three ball high speed really solid defensively just nothing bad i can really say about the card at my number 71 Pink Diamond Michael Beasley, 6'9", 7 foot wingspan. Defensively, not going to be great, but he is going to be solid enough. Offensively, has the T-man base on quick, which is just so good in my team. Michael Beasley can go out there and be that pure sharpshooter in my team that you might be looking for. Obviously, was available for 99,000 MTA a couple of weeks ago, and for that price... I mean, again, you can do way worse. Am I saying he's great for that price? No, but I am saying that you can do a lot worse than Michael Beasley with that release on quick. Next up, guys, is the one I'm talking about, Pink Diamond Giannis Antetokounmpo. Obviously not this one. We're talking about the uh, the 2K numbers card. Diamond Giannis is also very good. So if you have Diamond Giannis, again, definitely a card you can run and have a lot of success with. The problem with this Giannis is really the three ball only at a 67. Everything else this card does, plays good defense, gives you the, the Giannis type animations, which obviously anybody to use Giannis knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's one of the reasons Giannis is literally good every single single year no matter what because of his player model because of his player build it's bigger than his stats badges with Giannis Giannis in his player build gives you something absolutely different pink diamond Giannis coming in at my number 70 coming in at my number 69 we're plugging in Rui Hachimura 50,000 MT 6 8 6 10 wingspan now I've been going back and forth do I like Rui more do I like Michael Beasley more and I think what I've came to the consensus of is I slightly prefer Rui Hachimura just because I think he's defensively that little bit better. So that's where I'm at with both the cards. I do have Rui on my No Money Spent Squad series. I've been trying to use him, get him in his flow, but definitely a card that if you got the deluxe pack and got Rui, you can absolutely play the card. Coming in at my number 68, Pink Diamond Chet. Another one of these cards, like if you have the Galaxy Opal Chet, do I like him? Obviously. Like, I feel so bad if you have to run the Galaxy. Like, no, obviously run him. Pink Diamond Chet, still to this day in his own right, is a top 100 card, which is crazy. The longevity from January 1st to where we are now with Pink Diamond Chet, he has made it rain. At my number 67, Galaxy Open Kevin Love. Complete opposite of Chet. Like, Kevin Love, obviously, his strength's way higher. Obviously, he's undersized. 
offensively maybe going to be able to dribble better Caleb base on very quick release wise is going to be better Caleb is really solid in my team for sure like if you got Kevin Love you can absolutely run him he is just undersized so beware that like 6-8 at the 4 at this point when you're up against Wemby's definitely is a little concerning at my number 66 Galaxy Opal BI 95 three ball 95 speed defensively not great so with Brandon Ingram it's a combination of stuff number one I don't even love the card offensively, but number two, defensively, he's absolutely mid. So I don't know. Brandon Ingram, to me, as far as Galaxy Opus, is one of my least favorites. I just, I, I, I don't know. He's 6'8 at the two, which is nice, but I don't even love his player model player, but I just feel like he's just overall so mid, especially on that defensive side of the ball. At my number 65, Blake Griffin, another Galaxy Opal. I'm not the biggest fan of, especially defensively, but he is better than Brandon Ingram. And, and, and I got Blake Griffin out of the locker code, sadly. I didn't want him necessarily. But if you got Blake Griffin out of the locker code for a Galaxy Opal, I think he was a locker code, a ball drop. Maybe he was an agenda ball drop is what it was for like the Easter event. I actually think is what it was. But Blake Griffin, really solid, definitely a card that you can use and have as some as success with. At my number 64, we're plugging in Terrence Ross, New Galaxy Opal. Shout out Ronnie 2K said T Ross was super easy to get. I talked to Ronnie, he was actually chill, uh, you know, this weekend. So shout out Ronnie, I guess. He's obviously not in control with everything that's going on in the my team scene. Uh, but T Ross solid. I just don't necessarily think he's great. The release is fine. Pro Leaner is okay. CP Dribble Style is fine. But th there's nothing about this card that's like one of the top, you know, Opals in the game or top shooting guards in the game. He's fine. You can run him if you got him, but he's just not great. At my number 63, Hidu Turkaloo. Not great, especially defensively, just okay. And that's the big thing for me. A lot of these cards are okay, but if you look at the defensive side of the ball, which is my main thing, the thing I, I, I want the most out of a card, he's just mid. And I'm not trying to hate there on the card, but that's just the facts for Hidu Turkle. If you got him, you got a really good offensive card, but he is mediocre on the defensive end of the court. At my number 62, Jalen Brown. I'm pretty sure Galaxy Up with Jalen Brown was a part of like Ascension or something. 98, 3 ball, 97, speed 97, lateral good, interior perimeter, just really solid overall on the court. As I'm looking at this, I think I might have left Gerald Wallace off this list as I'm thinking about it. I think he was on the Ascension as well. Gerald Wallace would probably be in the 15 to 25 range, somewhere in there. Jalen Brown, not quite as high just because I don't love his six, don't love his release. He's fine. He's just not great at my number 61 triple threat offline reward galaxy opal Dwayne wade now if you got d wade absolutely can run him defensively is is going to be the best part about d wade but you guys got to realize the d wade base this year is not what it once was what was it 2k21 maybe the last time 2k20 the d wade base was so good it used to be d wade and base 98 that ran the game and then next gen came around and, and the d wade base was never the same if you ran d wade though in the past you know his release used to be that one of the best in the game now it's just not the case release somewhat slow d-wade can still compete in a my team though at my number 60 dino raj little maybe uh low rated for the three ball i'd like to see it be a little higher but it's fine 79 three ball is okay 89 speed solid enough defensively uh defensive badges playmaker wise really solid as well donovan mitchell base on quick mj dribble style pro two pro three leaner Dino is Dino in my team. He's going to get the job done, provide decent height, decent versatility on the court. Just no real downsides to Dino Raja in my team. At my number 59, Galaxy Opal Lamar Odom. It's available this season out of, an, I think, the Opal option pack. 93 three ball, 92 speed, solid defensively. To me, if every one of your stats is in the 90s, I got to respect you a decent, a, a decent amount. Now, do I love Lamar Odom's release? Do I necessarily love his SIGs? I think they're very mid, very mediocre. Pro, Pro 2 leaner is nice. 6'10 at the 3 is nice. Maybe an underrated Lamar Odom, honestly. I just haven't ever been really cooked by Lamar Odom, so it's hard for me to like sit up here in front of you guys and be like, yeah, actually, you know what? Lamar Odom can cook you, so that's where I'm at with Odom. He is fine, just not great in my team. I'm going to put a spot for both Sean Marion as well as uh, Gerald Wallace because I think I left both of them off this list, but just know uh, I'm, I'm a fan of both of them, okay? So I'm actually going to be ranking 102 players, but I'm going to I'm gonna be putting them basically in the same spot because I think that's where they both belong. As I'm doing this list, again, it's hard, but as I'm thinking about it, Sean Marion was available via that locker code, or I think it was the Easter agendas is, uh, out, of, out of that ball drop. So if you got him for free, I mean, he obviously 
obviously is solid. So coming on at my number 60, we have to rewind a little bit because I just put new two new guys in here. At number 60, Pink Diamond Oscar, before the all gambling stuff came out, Oscar was your best point guard in the game. He still can compete. Oscar based on normal is fine. Pro dribble style is kind of troll, but he's 6'5", can compete defensively. Oscar is going to be solid if you still do want to run him. At my number 59, Galaxy Opal James Worthy, 89 3 ball, 94 speed, a really solid defensively good interior perimeter. Just can't really complain about what James Worthy does give you on the court. Good versatility at 6'9". Decent enough release. Offensively, not going to necessarily do anything too crazy, though. At my number 58, Michael Porter Jr. Between MPJ, between James Worthy, it really is preference-based. At this stage, I might prefer Worthy, but it, it really is preference. MPJ on quick is very good, has more height. Defensive stats aren't quite as good, but if you give him an interior perimeter speed, Chewie's going to be A-OK. -okay. MPJ, my team unlimited reward last season, still can play to it this day in my team. At my number 57, Pink Diamond Alex Crusoe, 6'5", six, 6'5", five, six, five wingspan hotspots from both corners, 93 uh, three ball, 95 speed, good interior perimeter. Crimeter, uh, Crusoe based on quick. I think in my most recent tier list, when I was looking at the comments, the main guy people thought got slighted was Alex Crusoe. So, I mean, maybe I need to start using him more. Maybe I need to respect him, his game a little bit more. But for now, I've got him in at number 57, which is higher than he would have been a week ago. At my number 56, Galaxy Opal Dennis Rodman. Now, a couple of weeks ago, he literally was one of the main reasons I won the Players' Lounge My Team Tournament. Like, Dennis Rodman was absolutely beating my opponents up. His right stick ripper was going crazy. Great interior perimeter. He was just doing it for me. Now, in reality, I realize his release isn't great. Pro 3 leaners kind of troll. Kyrie dribble style is good, but it, it is what it is. Like, Dennis Rodman's going to be solid in my team. But there's nothing about the card that's like, oh my gosh, everybody needs to go get him. At my number 53, or at my number 55, I apologize, Pink Diamond Scottie Pippen. Now, here's the deal. I know there's a Dark Matter Scotty Pippen. And from what I've heard, Dark Matter Scotty Pippen's one of the best cards in the entire game. Pink Diamond Scotty can still play though. 92 3 ball, 95 speed, perfect defense release on normal. It feels like it's on quick or very quick. Scotty can still play in my team. I know he's only a Pink Diamond. And I know there's probably guys out there like, seriously, Ty, we don't care about Pink Diamonds at this point. But trust me, Scotty still can play in my team. At my number 54, Galaxy Opal Jamal Crawford. Now, if you're doubting me, go watch my Jamal Crawford gameplay because the card went absolutely crazy. I still have my doubts about Jamal Crawford's defense. Still have my uh, doubts about his player model player, but I don't think it's great. But his release, super easy time, easy to green. Debug dribble style. Norma Leaner is kind of troll as well, I guess. Glove picked out your Hall of Fame. Just wish he was slightly better defensively, but Jamal Crawford can play for sure in my team. At my number 53, Pink Diamond Franz Wagner, 6'10", 7'1", wingspan. The best part about Franz is the fact that he's 6'10". I could go all day about what I like about Franz. The book dribble style is released, even on normal timing is fine. But the fact that he is 6'10", is the reason he can compete with anybody else in the game. Good, uh, again, good size, good versatility, hot spots from everywhere. Should he be your primary ball handler? Probably not, but can be that good secondary ball handler and can, again, compete at the highest level. At my number 52, Pink Diamond OG and Anobi, 93 ball, 92 speed, really solid defensively. He's one of those 3 and D guys. I just like OG a lot more than, let's say, like the Bruce Bowens of the world, just because he's better. He's better than those type of guys, and he deserves to be where he's at on this tier list. OG, really, really solid in my team. At my number 51, Pink Diamond Victor Wembenyama. Yes, again, another card. If you have the Dark Matter Wemby, oh, poor you. Like, I feel so badly that you have to run the, the, the Dark Matter Victor Wembenyama. Like, Pink Diamond Wemby can still go out there and compete. 87 three ball, uh, defensively okay, solid enough. But again, obviously against like the Dark Matter Wemby, he is absolutely going to uh, struggle. At my number 50, cracking our top 50, Galaxy Opal Dan Issel. Nobody really wants to talk about this guy, hype this card up, but if you get Dan Issel, trust me, this card can play at a decent enough level. Kayla, based on very quick, normally in her Kobe dri dribble style, defensively really solid enough as well. Nobody really wants to talk about Dan Issel, and I get it, he's not the most exciting card, but he is a card that, you know what? Can go out there and compete at a pretty decent level. At my number 49, Galaxy Opal Julius Randle. When this card first came out, I was not sure about him, but defensively, Randle is it. That's the most important thing. Julius Randle's defense is it. Offensively, can give you something on the court. And the best part about Julius Randle is his defense. When I first looked at him, I'm like, the card's not great. But as I've times went on, I'm like, this card can actually really hoop, especially in the defensive end of the court. Coming in at my number 48, Galaxy Opal John Wall. 
Another card that I do believe was in that Easter uh, agenda, 92 3 bone, 99 speed, really solid defense. But the problem for John Wall is he's only 6'3". That's the only negative thing I can really say about John Wall. Everything else about this card, I like. But if you're talking about a card at only 6'3", what am I really supposed to sit there and say? Like, you're only 6'3". I don't know how I'm really supposed to hype up a card like that. So it is what it is. John Wall can play. He can go out there and compete. But he is only 6'3", which definitely does hurt his value. Coming in at my number 47, Pink Diamond Kawhi. Now, a lot of people might not be as high on Kawhi as I am. But as times went on, I've re realized that like his defense doesn't just come uh, naturally. Like This card is very good. Just want to give an honorable mention to a guy I forgot. Diamond Ron Artest should be on here, probably in like the mid-50s. Left him off this list. This Ron Artest definitely deserves a spot. But Kawhi, so, so, so good at my number 47. Can do everything you need on the court. At my number 46, Galaxy Opal DeMontis Sabonis. 7173 wingspan. Some people might be higher on DeMontis Sabonis. Some people might be lower. To me, it comes down to this. He's 7'1". He's got great badges. I uh, just can do a little bit of everything. Am I the biggest fan of, you know, his release? It's fine. It's on very quick, but I, I just think he deserves some respect. 46, I do think, is a good spot for him. Dark Matter Steph Curry coming in at my number 45. For Steph, it's just tough because he is so undersized. Only 6'2". But we have to realize he's still a Dark Matter. He's still going to be great badge-wise. Stat-wise, going to be off the charts good. Offensively, he's tough to guard. And if you don't believe me, watch my Steph Curry gameplay and watch me absolutely cook at my number 40 where we at 44 here pink diamond paul george now paul george is a card that it's gonna be so sad when we get our dark matter paul george that i gotta gamble for because i've had so much fun with paul george cards all year long i just have i feel like his release is really good even on normal timing his player bow that 6 8 is fantastic his pro leaner it's his own leaner but going right is so good i mean PG, one of the best defensive guys in the entire game. And I can't even say 3 and D guys because offensively he gives you a little bit more than a guy like an OG Ananobi. Like OG Ananobi is a perfect example of a 3 and D type guy. Paul George is similar, but Paul George does give you a little bit more offensively. At my number 43, Alperin Shangu, 92, 3 by 91 uh, speed. Interior solid, low perimeter. I wish his block rating was a little bit higher, but Shangun is fine in my team. Another domination guy that you do get on your road to Braun. And if you get Shangun, I would probably play him. Because again, a lot of my cards, when you do get a little higher, are going to be behind gambling. Shangun might even be a little bit low here at number 43. At number 42, Rafe LaFrance. Now, why Rafe over Shangun? I think it comes down to this. I, I really like the Malachi Flynn base. And I think at the center position, I prefer Rafe LaFrance. Power forward, I'm probably leaning Shangun. But it's a battle of, of what you want the most. To me, the Malachi Flynn base is to so, so, so good. Rafe, to me, a better version of Big Wang. You guys remember the diamond Big Wang? If you grind triple threat offline, you get him at 50 wins. Obviously, at this stage, not nearly as good as he once was. But to me, Rafe's just a better version of the diamond wang from a while ago. At my number 41, Galaxy Opal Carl Anthony Towns was available in the pack market uh, in a 4MT on Friday. Wasn't worth it, obviously, but if you got him, he can absolutely play. I just am not the biggest fan of catch release. That is, is to me the biggest downside. But I mean, again, I do think he does enough on the defensive end of the court to be in here at number 41. At my number 40, we're looking at Dr. J. Pink Diamond Dr. J. I know, card that came out January 26th is still relevant. Great speed, good three ball, great release. To me, that's the best part about Dr. J is his release. The John Wall base on normal is still okay. That's the thing. A lot of these nor bases on normal timing just feel a little slow. Dr. J's feels really, really good. And I think 40 is a good spot for him. At my number 39, Galaxy open Nikola Jokic, 97 three ball, 90 speed, good interior perimeter, good rebounder, good speed speed ball. There's just no real downsides. Like him compared to Shangun, it really is preference based, whoever you like more. But Jokic, I've played him on uh, on my main account before, got him off of the Ascension, and uh, and I've really liked what I've seen out of Jokic. Does he play for me anymore? No, just because I like some other cards more, but Jokic still to this day could be playing for me at that power forward position. At my number 38, Galaxy Opal Clay Thompson. I don't see a lot of people running Clay, but every time I play against Clay, he gives me some problems. So maybe Clay should be higher on this list because I don't not like playing against this card. Every I, I feel like he gets open way 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 more than he should and again maybe that's a me problem maybe i'm not playing as good a defense as i should but i feel like this card's nearly always open defensively really good six six 
Clay is really solid, is available as a Maya Team Unlimited reward. I had DeMontis Sabonis in here twice, so we'll have to skip right to number 36 here, which is Pink Diamond Dyson Daniel. 6'7", 6'10", wingspan. Dyson, Dyson, Dyson. All my nobody spent use this card so much. And every time he comes in the game, he impacts it on the defensive end of the court. Because what I have right now is Devin Booker is my starting point guard. Dyson Daniels comes off the bench. Two polar opposite players. They are. Like, Dyson's going to be way better defensively. D-Book, obviously, way better offensively. But whenever Dyson comes in the game, he's in an immediate impact on that defensive end of the court. And you want to talk about his release? He's got the Dyson Daniels base on quick. What I would compare it to is kind of like that Jalen Brunson base. Uh, maybe not quite as quick, but that's what I personally would compare it to. At my number 35, Galaxy Opal Mark Gasol. I think he's one of the more underrated cards in the entire game. Uh, now, yes, I will say this. You got to figure out his release. And, and have I figured it out completely? No. Have I gotten better with it? Yes. So, like, I'm still not where I need to be with Marcus. So, I've gotten a lot better with it. But I, I love this card. Speed is a little low. You want to upgrade that with the shoe. But everything else the card does get uh, do at a high level. Marcus Gasol based on very quick, solid Kobe dribble style. 2K did give us a really solid Marcus Gasol locker code. At my number 34, Galaxy Opal Brandon Miller. Now, again, a lot of these cards are available in your option pack at level, what is it, 37 or wheel spin at level 37 or available in my team unlimited. B-Mill, he's solid, but it's just like, he's not, he's fine. Like, I, he's, he's fine. If you're running Brandon Miller, he's fine. I, I can't hate on the card, but it just comes down to the fact that like, even if you look at his badge count, it's just not where it needs to be. I get it, six, nine at the two is nice, but his player build to me isn't that impressive either. Christian Leitner coming in here at number 33. There's some people that don't like Christian Leitner and I don't understand it. Christian Leitner is really good in my team. Like really good. What What, what is there not to like about it? Defensively, solid, six, 11, good release. If you're not liking Christian Leitner, I think it's your problem. Now again, I don't know. I've not used Christian Leitner. I don't have the card. Why? Because I can't grind everything out. Like, I would drive myself crazy, especially co-op. I'll never grind that. But Christian Leitner is a solid enough card in my team. Coming in at number... I typed in Hondo. I'm, I'm crazy. Coming in at number 32, John Havlicek. Was our salary cap reward of last season? And I think this is the main reason I'm even grinding for uh, for, for Dikembe Mutombo. Because Hondo is a card I missed out on last uh, season. Why? Again, because I didn't grind it. Maybe he should be higher on this list. But I just feel like nobody has this card because nobody really grinded salary cap. But the card did end up being pretty good. Has his base on very quick. Movement-wise, really solid as well. Hondo can for sure play in a my team. I'm at number 31. Correct me if I'm wrong. I do believe this card was free in the pack market. If I'm wrong... I apologize. I do like Miles Turner, though. If you do got this card, he can definitely play for me. Miles Turner base on quick. Good player, model player, but I'm not going to spend a ton of time on him because I'm not, I'm about 50 50 whether he was in the pack market or not. So if he wasn't, I apologize for including him on this list, but I do think he was. At my number 30, Galaxy Opal, Joe L. Embiid, 7 feet tall, 7 5 wingspan. Again, another card that is available via the wheel spin or option pack. And if you get Embiid, he can play him. MB base on quick. Pro drip style is not great. Base cleaner is not great, but he can play at either the power forward or center position and give you guys a lot. At my number 29, free locker code Jason Kidd. If you want anybody to hype up Jason Kidd, I'll be at the top of the list. I'll be at the top, of this kid, uh, the, the top of the list. Now, sadly, the locker code didn't last that long. So even on my No Money Spent squad series, I missed out on it because I was gone all weekend. I don't take my No Money Spent console when I'm gone. And, uh, and my My Team mobile account's connected to my main account. So I missed out on Jason Kidd. As sad as it is, it's the truth. I missed out on him. If you got him, though, you got a really good point guard. Pro 2 leaner. His release really isn't bad. Defensively, so good. Like, Jason Kidd, I say it, is one of your better point guards in the entire game that is not hidden behind gambling. At my number 28, Tyson Chandler. This card's longevity is so impressive. He's never going to become outdated because of how good he is on the defensive end of the court and how good his release is. His release is really solid, but the defense he plays and his ability to rebound the ball is unmatched. Like that's where Tyson Chandler to me is truly at his best. It's tough to, you know, outdo what Tyson Chandler can do when it does come down to that. At my number 27, we're plugging in Galaxy Opal, Allen Houston, 97 three ball, 94 speed, really solid defensively. Now, am I biased for Allen Houston because I got him and he's currently my backup? shooting guard sure i'll be the first to admit it i'm probably biased for alan houston but at the end of the day like i i do like the card i like him i like his release he does a lot of good things for me 
at my number, where are we at here? My number 26. We're plugging in Pink Diamond Tyrus Thomas. 96 speed, perfect defense. The only problem with Tyrus Thomas is that 83 ball. If his three ball was even, uh, I don't even know, a little bit higher, 84, I'd hit the card up even more. That's the only downside to Tyrus Thomas. But other than that, does do a lot of things on the court at a very high level. At number 26, I think is a good spot. At my number 25, Pink Diamond Devin Booker, 96 three ball, 95 speed defensively okay i do wish he had some hall of fame defensive badges like zero hall of fame defensive badges to me seems pretty troll but his offense is obviously so good d base base on quick debug leaner debug dribble style debug does a lot of great things for me on the court at my number 24 galaxy opalanzo multiple ways to get him free he was in the pack market as well as now he is in a triple threat co-op if you get him obviously he can play can compete at a really high level half range Really solid defensively. The only downside to Lonzo is his release. I'm just not a big fan of his release. Offensively, very mediocre. But on the defensive end of the court, Lonzo Ball is absolutely fantastic. At my number 23, free LeBron James. Again, Domination Brown. We're not even talking about the other Opal Brown. If you have the other Opal Brown, obviously he'd be higher than where this Brown is. But free Braun is still very good. What's the difference between this Braun and the other Braun? Well, based on very quick, I think different dribble style as well. That's really the big difference between the cards. But Domination Braun still can play and compete at a really high level. At my number 22, we're plugging in DeMarcus Cousins. 92 three ball, 90 speed, good interior, uh, decent enough perimeter. Like perimeter block steel. I wish all those were a little bit higher, but Boogie's going to have a solid release. MJ Dribble style, Norm Molina, still going to do a lot of, of, of things really well for you. I just wish his perimeter defense was slightly better. At my number 21, Lowry Marketing. Now for Lowry, I mean, look. I got him in my team unlimited. You can get him in whatever your favorite modes are. 94 to three ball, 89 speed, 89 interior, 89 perimeter. There are a lot of things that he does really well. Do I think, you know, he could do some things better? Sure, especially on the defensive end of the court. Wish the steel block perimeter interior were all a little bit higher, but he does do a lot of things at a pretty good level. Coming in at my number 20, Galaxy Opa Moses Malone, only an 89 three ball or an 83 ball, but everything else this card does is a, a, at a really high level. To me, he's just a better, better version of a guy like Tyrus Thomas. I think that's the best comparison for Moses Malone at this stage. Obviously was your ultimate reward last season. Moses Malone is really good at my number 19 pink diamond kobe i know i'm way too high on kobe than i should be but it's just like this card is so good still to this day like i i do use alan houston over kobe right now but when it came down to it if i was playing for a lot of money i'd probably choose kobe Bryant. like ultimately i probably would i do think this card does give you a little bit more on the court than a guy like an alan houston at my number 18 gameplay coming soon dark matter gilbert arenas 97 three ball 96 speed solid interior solid perimeter there's no downsides to gilbert arenas outside of the fact that he's only 6'4 but remember jason kidd is 6'4 as well gilbert's got the casey bay base on very quick normal leaners kind of troll mj dribble style but at the end of the day he should be fantastic offensively and defensively i think he does enough to hold it down i'm not saying he's going to be the best defense player in the game but i think he does enough to at least hold it down at my 16 and 17s we're plugging in both james hardens i see a lot of people card oh tight this is titled free card tier list but you plug in the pro pass version of a card or this and that look all i'm gonna say is this to me i could care less whether it's, it's the pro pass version or the regular version and that goes for sj and james harden now maybe that's ignorant of me to say considering you know for james harden his release is on very quick for the uh pro pass one and on quick for the normal one for sga same thing as was the dribble styles change but for me they're still both very good and i don't think it changes a ton for me at my number 15 and 14 i told you i'd plug them in together so i'm going to sean marion gerald wallace again they i do believe both of these cards uh I, I, gerald wallace i think was on ascension sean marion was available over easter sean marion i owe you an apology I owe you an apology. I wasn't familiar with your game when you first came out. Obviously, you are absolutely elite, absolutely incredible, especially on the defensive end of the court. But even offensively, I think his release is on very quick. Does have a low release point. I think it's somewhat hard to time, hard to green. But if you get it in the hang of it, shouldn't miss with him. Joe Wallace, one of the best 3 and D guys we have in the entire game. Both those cards are absolutely elite. Back to reg regular schedule programming at my number 13. We're plugging in Paolo Boncaro, one of my favorite cards in the game. I mean, honestly, 
Pro Pass Reward Bond Carry is so good in my opinion. I'm not trying to get you guys to buy the Pro Pass, but this card plays at such a high level. Boncaro based on very quick is smooth. Just the guy I trust on the court. I think that's the best thing for me to say, to, to describe my feelings towards Boncaro. Just the guy I can go out there and trust. There's enough guys in this game that I don't trust. Boncaro, I can go out there and trust. Knock down shots, play a good defense. I put in Moses twice, so we're going to skip to number 11, which is my Galaxy Opal with David Robinson. 7-1, seven, 7-5 seven, wingspan here. For me, available in salary cap. I've played a little salary cap. Haven't seen David Robinson yet. Obviously, don't expect to. But the problem for me is I've played a lot of the game. Like, I've played over, what, 120 offline triple threat games. Haven't seen D-Wade. I've played a crazy amount of Unlimited. Haven't, I've seen Clay once. Played a few salary games. Haven't seen D-Rob. So, for me, to be honest with you guys, I haven't seen a lot of these rewards. And, and D-Rob's another one, like, I'd love to get. He'd start for me in an instant. I just haven't gotten him yet. At my number 10, we're plugging in Andrew Wiggins. People ask me all the time, Ty, you really like Andrew Wiggins this much? I love Andrew Wiggins in this game. D-Bug dribble style, very quick jumper. Just so good on both ends of the court. And I think that's what I like most about Andrew Wiggins is his defense is off the charts good. Offensively, off the charts good. I just, I, I, I love Andrew Wiggins as an overall card in my team. At my number nine, Austin Reeves was a long grind. And when the card first came out, they said, what, what did they say? Like, I think they said something like, you have, um, what did they say? You have a week or, yeah, you had a week to get Austin Reeves and it was like a 15 hour grind, something crazy. They did change it around and made the grind a lot more manageable. But when that grind first came out, I was stunned. Us Reeves is so good. Galaxy Open Penny Hardaway is available in the Ascension. I think it's online modes, but is available in the Ascension. 93 three ball, 95 speed, 94 lateral. Quinny's good into your perimeter. Penny is fantastic. Best part about him, 6'7". Like defensively off the charts good and offensively can hold it down. Release on quick, decent enough movement, decent dribble six. Penny Hardaway is very deserving to me of being a top 10 card in our entire game. At my number seven, Terry D. I still got to get the hang of using this card. I've not figured it out yet, but badge-wise, 38 Hall of Famers. I mean, what are we really talking about? A 6'7". I wish you could play a shooting guard 100%, but he is 6'7". That's a problem at the three. That's the only problem with Terry D. Other than that, release on very quick. Rudy Base, Mellow Upper, MJ Leaner. I, I actually don't mind it. A lot of people don't like it. MJ Dribble Style. To me, I don't mind Terry Six. Just comes down to I'm using a 6'7 small forward at this stage in my team. That's the big problem in my opinion. At my number six, Galaxy up with Wilt Chamberlain, 96 speed, great interior perimeter. Defense, that's where Wilt's at his best. Offensively, he's not great. He can knock down shots, but it's just, it's kind of troll. His three ball is not super high. Release, obviously not great. But on the defensive end of the court, there's not many better than Wilt Chamberlain. At my number five, he is available today for 75,000 VC. It is Galaxy Opal Hakeem Olajuwon. Do I think he's worth that price? I, I don't think so, no. But again, it's just me telling you not to spend money on the game. Like there is worse things you can do with, a, with your MT. Hakeem is really good and one of the best big men's and probably the best big men that you can get without gambling in the entire game right now. So again, am I telling you to get him? I don't know, but he is really, really, really good. At my number four, as far as top cards in the game, Galaxy Up Andre Iguodala. And I know y'all are ready to fry me down below in the comments, but I need you to hear me out. Name a better defensive player on ball defender than Andre Iguodala. Can't name Ron Artest. Oh, wait. Name him. You can't. Got the Pro 2 leaner. Iggy base him very quick. The card is just so, so, so solid in my team. It just comes down to the fact that, yes, do I wish Iggy wasn't, you know, the, the you know, a, a pro, hit him behind the pro pass? Absolutely. But you can guarantee yourself Andre Iguodala. At my number three and two, SJ. Obviously, the SJ with Kyrie and very quick is going to be higher. So, you know, when it comes down to it, yes, the blue jersey Kawhi is better than the white jersey Kawhi, but it's not, or, or, or not Kawhi, SJ, but it's not by its like it's that big of a deal. To me, both these cards, you know, are top three cards in the entire game. And even if you don't have the pro pass, it's okay. This SJ can more than get the job done in my team. Both these cards the best two point guards we have in the entire game coming in right now as our best card right now in the entire game dark matter glenn rice 98 three ball 95 speed really solid defensively there's no downsides to glenn a lot of times there will be a downside to a card for glenn rice there is none 
at that uh, shooting guard position, there's nobody better than Glenn Rice. 6'8", and even if you can't figure out his release, obviously it is tough to uh, get the hang of it. I mean, what he does on the defensive end of the court is more than enough. Glenn Rice, your best overall card in NBA 2K24, my team. That's going to wrap it up for our video today, guys. Let me know your thoughts on it down below in the comments. Drop a like on it. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, man, I love you guys. Have a blessed day.